now we're going to create a frame that we'll make that a subclass of JFrame. So we create our own JFrame subclass. So let's say we call it game frame. And we make that visible too. It's always recommended to create your own subclass of a of a frame because you will put stuff in that frame like other components in that frame and it's good to do that nicely encapsulated in your own class. So this will not compile because the game frame class doesn't exist yet. So let's create that class. And we will have a constructor And in that constructor, we'll set up the contents of that frame. We have to say that we extend JFrame and we have to import Java X string JFrame. So let's see what happens. We compile this, it works, we compile the whole program and we run it. And we get an empty frame again. Now here we can operate on that frame. For example, we can say set title to set the title. We can set the layout manager, which is the object that's responsible for organizing or laying out all the components that sit inside that frame. Right now the frame is empty, contains no components, but you want to add some. And so you want to say what the layout actually is going to be. There's a class board layout, which is one of the most simple layout managers. And we're going to use that for now. We have to import that class, import Java AWT board layout. And now that the layout is set, we can add things to it. So for example, we would like to add to this frame a button J button, click me. So the button will have the text click me on it. And we need to say where inside this frame this button should be placed. And we have a border layout. And the border layout class has some constraints we can use here, some values we can use to say where this button should be placed. We would like this to be placed in the center. You can also add something else, for example, a new J label. Click the button below. And we also need to say where to place this label, border layout dot. So you'd like to place the label above the button, which is north. So the label is going to be the top of the frame spanning the frame in width and the button is going to be below. So we'll be need to import those two classes, JavaX swing J label and import JavaX swing J button. And last but not least, when we do this and we create a frame like that, adding things into it, in the end, we want to make sure that the frame has the right size. And the method pack is going to basically ask the layer manager to compute how big this frame needs to be to neatly fit all the components. Each of those components, like the J label here and the J button here, they have a preferred size, how big they would like to be in order to appear nicely so that the text fits, for example. So the layer manager will ask those guys how big would you like to be? And it will then compute how big the whole frame needs to be. And we'll make that frame the corresponding size. So, oops, we have forgotten a parenthesis here. Let's check, it compiles, and then we can run our application. And indeed, we get a label and underneath the button. And if I now resize this, see that the button takes up all the extra space. Okay, that's what the center cell in a button layout in a border layout really means. 
Okay, so one thing we would like to do in addition to this, we would like to respond to this button. So if the user clicks on the button, we would like to perform some action. And there is a way to do that, and it works through listeners. So listeners are is a term in, in Java, Swing, and SWT, and AWT. That's basically a synonym for observer. If you know the observer design pattern, listeners are like that. So let's register some listeners. So I'd like to add a listener to the button to be sure that when the button is clicked, we can do something. Now we need to get a hold of this button. So let's have a local variable, final j button button equals new j button, and like this. And so now we can talk to the button object. And we can say, hey button, please add an action listener, like that. Okay, add action listener, and here we can provide a argument. This argument is an object. This object has to implement the action listener interface. And whenever the button gets clicked, the button will then notify this object by calling its action performed method. So we'll use again anonymous inner classes to do this. So we'll create a new subclass of action listener. And in place here we're adding a method or implementing the action performed method. Like this. So the body of this method gets executed whenever the user clicks the button. Now let's do just some simple output system out print line button clicked and let's also print the thread that is executing this code. As I said before when you're executing code that is triggered by some user interaction then it's handled by the event dispatch thread and executed by the event dispatch thread so we should see that and you print this out here. So we get the current thread and we print it out. Let's compile this. We need to import those classes, action listener and action event. They're in java.awt event action listener and the same with action event. Okay, let's run this. And if I click, we should see in the GUI a new line, unclicked. And we see that the thread that is executing this code, this action performed method, is the same thread that was creating the GUI. So all the interaction with the user interface happens in this event dispatch thread. 